Hello, Internet world. My name is David Shank. I'm author of The Forgetting, and I'm senior advisor to Cure Alzheimer's Fund, which is a remarkable organization that helps raise money and then puts that money directly and immediately into important research to help find a cure for Alzheimer's disease. You might have read about our most recent research. It was in the New York Times on the front page this week, Rudy Tanzi's amazing, amazing development uh, confirming the amyloid hypothesis for the first time replicating the Alzheimer's, both the Alzheimer's hallmarks in a Petri dish, which is an uh, extraordinary breakthrough, uh, and also identifying uh, the key enzyme that develops from plaques and tangles. You'll be hearing a lot more about that science later on. We're going to be, over the next 45 minutes, talking to some of the people who are coming into the room, who are here to attend this amazing event, which is 10 years, uh, 10 years of, of research. Here come uh, Jeff and Jackie Morby, our chairman and two of our founders. Welcome. Thank you for coming uh, today. And tell us, uh, tell us who you are and why you're here. Jackie. I'll start. 10 years ago, we had this idea of starting a foundation to find a cure for Alzheimer's. We thought about it and we happened to meet Rudy and that is what started the process. Um, we said, but we can't do this by ourselves. So we thought, who would be really terrific? And I had known Henry McCants in my work as a venture capitalist. He'd been a very, very tough competitor and I knew that his wife had Alzheimer's. And so we put a call in. Jeff and Rudy went to lunch. Henry was a little skeptical, but then he said, I'm in. And that was the start. Ten years later, here we are. And Jeff, this is an extraordinary week to be, to be talking about Alzheimer's and Alzheimer's research because of everything that's going on. What are your thoughts? Well, we're very fortunate that the, this idea of uh, Alzheimer's in a dish came out just at this time because it's created a lot of interest in what we're doing. But the reason it's creating interest is it's a profoundly important discovery that's going to not only affect Alzheimer's, it's going to affect many other diseases. So it's a, a very important uh, development for all of science. So we happen to be very lucky that it coincided with this conference. Terrific. Well, thank you for coming. We've got a lot of people to talk to. Welcome, and we've got a lot more to, to hear from for, uh, for the afternoon. So you'll be hearing more, as I said, more about the science uh, in about an hour, uh, starting around 4 o'clock. Uh, the, the chairman of our research consortium, Rudy Tanzi, is going to be walking through the absolute cutting edge of the state of Alzheimer's research, and he's going to be doing it in a way that only Rudy can, really doing it for, for the lay lay reader. This is not a talk for scientists, it's a talk for the public. So welcome. Hi Phyllis, hi, nice to see you. Tell us, tell us who you are and why you're here. Phyllis Rappaport, founder of Cure Alzheimer's Fund. And your husband. Jerry Rappaport. So um, we've already been through the founding story, we don't need to do that. Just a few, a few words on what it is to be uh, to be in the 10th year of this organization. Obviously, a lot of extraordinary science is coming out. It's been coming out for years, but this is really a very special time. Well, it's very exciting because the New York Times called Rudy's latest discovery a real game changer, and it is, and that's what we dreamed about doing, changing the science and having major breakthroughs. So to have it recognized this week on our 10th anniversary is hugely exciting. Yes, I agree. Anything to add, Jerry? Well, I, I think it's a perfect example of the importance of, of applying venture capital business principles to an attempt to solve a major public problem with um, a maximum use of really relatively small funds. And I think it's a tribute to, uh, to the cure outs on his founders, but equally to, to their recognition early on of Rudy's potential to provide leadership and guidance uh, to on a, on, a, on a program that required focus uh, and patience and now is just the opportunity of seeing the reward that sets the foundation perhaps for our ultimate goal which is the cure for Alzheimer's. And I want to add 
we invited a lot of leaders in Boston, and actually Mayor Menino is very sorry he can't be here. He's on a book tour. He has a new mm. book. But this is a good example of a very successful Boston-based enterprise that is making a difference for the world. And we fly below the radar. I'm hoping flying below the radar will not be true anymore. I don't think I that's good. I want us to be much more public than that. I don't think we're below the radar anymore, but but thank you for, for stopping by saying one more. I, I, well, I, I do have to, to add, yeah, yeah. Uh, just as a, as a political backdrop, sure. that uh, the current mayor, Marty Walsh, uh, issued a proclamation recognizing the tremendous uh, contribution of Cure Alzheimer's Fund as a Boston-based research uh, enterprise, and we're very grateful for that support. Thank, thank you so much for, for saying hi. Congratulations. And now we'll welcome another founder, co-founder, Henry McCants. Hey, Thank you for joining us. Nice to uh, see you. Nice to see you. And we've already been saying it's, uh, it's exciting that it's been 10 years, all the research that has come out. But this is really a particularly exciting time to be listening, get, we're, as we're getting ready to hear Rudy really lay out the science for us. Right. I, you know, you couldn't have scripted this any better. Uh, we have a lot of uh, enthusiasm. We had a lot of energy, but we can't tell nature when to accept a paper or the New York Times when to write an article. So it's really exciting. Yeah. All right. Fantastic. Well, thanks for coming by. Congratulations. Yeah. Right. And we'll, we'll uh, see what Rudy has to say to us later Perfect. on. All Thank right. You. Thank you. And now joined by Tim Armour, CEO of Cure Alzheimer's Fund. Good to see Welcome. you, David. Good Thank to see you. you. Thank you. A few thoughts on what's so special about today. It has been 10 years since uh, Cure Alzheimer's began. As a matter of fact, it began right here at the Harvard Club, mm. where a couple of the founders met with Rudy and decided this is something definitely that they had to do. So it brings us all back to the source. And um, I think we can safely say that their original idea and their extraordinary ambition has now been borne out. Yeah, I think uh, it, it is, is yet to materialize into that therapy or therapies that we all want to see. But the approach has proven to be very successful and very effective. Uh, we think we've made a significant contribution to the field in terms of research and moving this ahead so that people who already have the disease can have some real hope of respite soon, and those that haven't can look forward to uh, good prevention. Let's just spend 30 seconds on the core idea of, of Cure Alzheimer's Fund. I'll give you my version, you give me your version. For me, I think the core idea is this superstar all-star collection of scientists, which we call our research consortium, which is led by Rudy Tanzi of Harvard. And we basically follow their ideas and follow their lead on what they, what they want to be most doing with any money we can raise. Yeah, that's exactly right. Now, there are many, many, many wonderful all-star researchers out there. We have a particularly good team uh, that has a great track record in Alzheimer's research. Uh, and they are the ones that guide the research that we do and that we fund. Uh, we also have a good oversight in our scientific advisory board with two Nobel laureates and other very senior people. Uh, so our mantra is very fast focused funding on things that maybe other people wouldn't fund but for people who are imminently fundable because they have been very successful before and it seems to be working well. Terrific. Well thank you for stopping by to say hi. Congratulations. Thank you, thank you. We'll talk more later. All right. And I don't know who's quite up up quite next, um, but um, as, as I've said before, starting around four o'clock, you're gonna hear from Rudy Tanzi, who's gonna be laying out the science really carefully for anyone to understand, not for scientists, but for, uh, for a general audience. Even I'll be able to understand uh, what he's talking about. He's gonna be talking about not only his latest breakthrough, but, but uh, the, all the cutting edge science that's, that we're seeing with Alzheimer's disease. Hi, hey, David. nice my to name, see you. My name is Dick Pratt. I'm from Martha's Vineyard, from Dick, the Rotary. Great to meet you. Lander. All right. Great to meet both of you. Tell us, actually, step a little bit more into the sure. into the circle here, so we have you on camera. You got it. And uh, tell us uh, about how you got to know Cure Alzheimer's Fund and and what your what your uh, enthusiasm and interest is about here. Well, I happened to meet uh, Jeff Morby in a bar room, and uh, we had a conversation that was leading to his involvement and Cure Alzheimer's involvement in a marriage between. Rotary International, and the Cure Alzheimer's Fund. Likewise, well, we're from Martha's Vineyard and uh, had the opportunity to meet Jeff, and Jeff presented to our Rotary Club, 
uh, the Rotary Club of Martha's Vineyard. And from that date, uh, about three and a half years ago, we were able to partner with Jeff and the Cure Alzheimer's Fund to take that initiative uh, internationally. So Rotary is an international organization of 1.2 million members, and we've taken it from our local club uh, to an area level, to a national level, and now an international level with a group called uh, the Alzheimer's Dementia Rotarian Action Group. So it's a very exciting initiative within Rotary. Uh, and aside from Rotary, we're just thrilled to have a partnership with the Cure Alzheimer's Fund and Jeff and everybody associated with the group. That's fantastic. And we know that historically when Rotary decides to get involved in, in tackling a health issue, they can do extraordinary things. Isn't that right? With the most recent development uh, in Evanston, Illinois, which is the home ground for Rotary International, the most recent news has caused a ripple effect around the entire office, believe me. That's wonderful. Thank you for both for being here. It was great to see you, and I hope you get a chance to talk more later. Good enough. Yeah, yeah. Terrific. Thanks. Pleasure. Yeah, thanks for coming. Um, and it looks like we've got Bob Greenhill up next, so let's welcome him in. Bob, David Shank, hi. David, how do you do? Nice to meet you. I don't think we've met yet, but no, it's, yeah. a, it's an honor. I've been hearing all about you and your oh, involvement with Cure Alzheimer's <laughs> Fund. How long have you been involved with Cure Alzheimer's Fund? Is, remind me, has it been from the very beginning? or no, when did no, you join? about two years. About two years. Okay. Two years. My wife has Alzheimer's, and I decided rather than sit back and do nothing, I'd get involved. And what are your impressions now that you've spent this much? We've actually been involved for about the same amount of time. What, what are your impressions of what Cure Alzheimer's Fund does that's different from other organizations? Well, what I wanted to do was find people that could attract the best scientists and had no bureaucratic footprint and basically no sacred cows and they're willing to take the most difficult projects on and I found it here. Well, we're honored by your support and um, thank you for being here and congratulations and obviously a very big week for, for all of Alzheimer's science. It's, it's really extraordinary what's well, thank happening. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks for coming. And I'm not quite sure who's going to be joining us next but I'll fill in the time here by uh, saying that um, we're reminding you that we're at the Harvard Club and this is kind of a pre-game show. It's our version of the red carpet interviews before our annual, um, our annual symposium, scientific symposium. We're marking 10 years, actually, of Cure Alzheimer's Fund's existence, which means that for 10 years, uh, for 10 years we've had um, a small and growing now number of people giving money to a, a consortium, uh, an all-star consortium of scientists led by Rudy Tanzi. I believe we're going to be talking to Rudy next. He is the, the chairman of the, of the research consortium. And the idea is to privately fund ideas that are a little bit too ambitious, a little bit, uh, a little bit not quite fitting in the right political mode to get a big grant from NIH to get public funding, but that is uh, conceived of and approved of by some of our leading Alzheimer's scientists. So, uh, and, and that was the idea of several co-founders came together. Now it's thousands and thousands of, of donors who are contributing to this cause as little as a dollar, as much as hundreds of thousands of dollars uh, or more. Um, and we raise about $10 million a year for research. And here is Rudy Tanzi. That is your name, isn't it, sir? Yes. Dr. You have, Rudy Tanzi. You have a good memory. Right, exactly. Uh, for a few years anyway. Um, welcome, congratulations on an enormous, enormous breakthrough, one of many in a long career, but uh, tell us what your feelings are to be invo involved in Alzheimer's research at this particular time. I think it's pretty amazing that everything converges, that we're here celebrating the 10th anniversary of the top research foundation in Alzheimer's and then having maybe our top research result in the same week. And, uh, we didn't write this stuff. This is <laughs> it's meant to be. So it's really exciting because I think for the first time right now, we can imagine doing rapid drug discovery at 10 times the pace, 10 times less cost, in a much more relevant system for Alzheimer's than what we previously had using uh, mice and other models. So I feel like it's the beginning of a new era, and I should be in the lab getting set for it. <laughs> yeah. I think the, the funny thing about seeing you is everyone is, everyone's love, loves you, loves to see you at these functions, but we're always, whenever we see you, we're always thinking, why are you here and not back there curing Alzheimer's? Um, so walk us through, we only have a, a few seconds here, but walk us through the, not the precise things you're gonna say, but the, the kind of thing you're gonna be saying with, with your longer presentation this afternoon. 
Well, I'm going to talk about how much we've learned from Alzheimer's by studying the genes involved for the last 20 years, and now having a model system for the first time with human nerve cells with full Alzheimer's pathology in a dish where we can study how those genes cause the disease and come up with therapies to block it. So um, we call this genes to therapy, and, or G2T, and uh, it begins now. Really exciting. Great to see you, Rudy, and we'll be you, hearing more of you later. Thanks, Great, sir. thanks. And, oh, it looks like uh, Matthew Zulik, our, our newest board member, is going to join us. Um, if someone will nudge him in, in this direction. Come, say hello. Very tall nice and wonderful you. person. How Great to see you nice again. Nice to see you, too. Oh, thanks for being here. Welcome to the, the board again. Uh, thank you for everything you're doing for Alzheimer's research. Uh, this is your first formal event being a part of Cure Alzheimer's Fund. Tell us, um, tell us your thoughts. Well, there seems to be great energy, and the, the room's filling up quickly. A lot of people are very interested in the announcements this week. Certainly the work of Cure Alzheimer's and the scientists is, uh, appears to be produ producing very good dividends and helping to find a cure. That's exciting, really exciting. We've got a, a minute or two, can, and, I, and I don't mean to be morose about it, but can you tell us how you got, how you got into, you're interested in Alzheimer's cells, a little bit about your story, and, and how you found Cure Alzheimer's Fund? Yeah, you know, I think I'm probably like most people here, that we, our lives have been touched by someone who suffered uh, from this terrible affliction, both, both of my parents, and most recently my dad did. And it's a very horrible, horrible feeling when all of a sudden one day you see this man who threw the ball to you and taught you the periodic table, to the next minute not be able to remember who you are and, and speak in a, a language that's just not interpretable. And you realize how fast and how many people this in, illness afflicts. So I was introduced to this uh, by, by my interest and curiosity and certainly you know Henry McCants in the Mowbrays for a long periods of time. And so they asked me to get involved and it's been nothing but, but really hard work and great fun along the way. Well, we're delighted to have you. It was great to meet you a few months ago. I know you're going to bring amazing new energy to this already very energetic and, and very smart group. And now we have even more brain power. So uh, it's a delight to see you and, and, see and you. Uh, hope to talk to you more later. Thank you, David. All right. All yeah, the thanks best. for stopping by. Yep. We're going to be welcoming now Charlie Collier, who is our honoree and my old friend, and Susan Stover. Hi. You're Susan. Hi. Great to meet you. Nice Charlie, great to see you again. Such an honor. Um, Tell us uh, your thoughts, Susan, about, well, why don't you tell us uh, a little bit about Charlie and, uh, and sorry, I was just getting a little note in my ear from, from, from the producer. Yeah. Um, tell, us, um, tell us a little bit about Charlie. Um, I, I know that he has Alzheimer's disease. Every, I think everyone knows yeah. that. Um, but tell us a little bit about how he's chosen to confer, uh, first of all, to be so public about it, and also to be, to, to be associated with Cure Alzheimer's Fund. Sure. Well, Charlie, when he was first diagnosed um, in 2008, he decided that he was going to lean into this challenge. And as he says, uh, and he said for Cure Alzheimer's in a video he did for them back in 2011, we're all dealt a uh, hand of cards in life, and it's how you deal with them once you're dealt them. So Charlie and I have been going around and... Uh, doing a little program talking about Alzheimer's, the bad and the good. And uh, his main manifestation of his Alzheimer's right now is aphasia. Mm. So he has trouble word retrieval. Yes, yes. So, um, but he's doing... He still really has that beautiful smile, doesn't he? <laughs> and just, look, just looking at his face, you know what a warm, wonderful, intelligent person. I got to know Charlie a little bit a few years ago when I became associated with Cure Alzheimer's Fund. And he was having some aphasia then too, but it doesn't take much interaction. I am, I'm now feeling sorry for the for the people out in internet land who don't get to just come up and hug this guy and be around him and, and yeah. feel his warmth and, and his intelligence and his humanity. We um, a um, a program a, a program. And we, she's really <laughs> great. We have fun. And, and fun. And, and they, they, I, they, they, wow. They love and it. And then we, and, 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 and
Uh, they ask questions. Charlie want, just wants to get a conversation going about Alzheimer's right. so that it's no longer something that people are afraid to talk right, about right. or embarrassed to talk about. And so that's what he's trying to do. So t tell us a little more about the program. What, 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 what types of events, what, what types of venues, how do you, how do you talk to yeah. people? I mean, what's the... Well, what we've done is we've done several programs um, at different libraries. Uh, we did one at the Wellesley Library, and we did one at the Boston Public Library here. Mm -hmm. We just want, did one at the Peterborough Library. Um, we did one for uh, Asai, the uh, pharmaceutical company that developed Aricept. They do an employee education program. And what we do in that um, scenario is I sit down and I interview Charlie. I ask him questions, which we hope then prompts the audience to ask questions, oh, and it does. So I asked Charlie a series of questions, things about how he first came to realize something was wrong, mm. um, and then talking about you know what's bad, what he's experienced that's bad, and then what's the good? And people say, what is the good? Yeah. And what do you say? What's the good in Alzheimer's? It's that... Um, you say it's a, it's a, a gift. A gift. And he's living his life, you know, yeah. to the fullest. Yeah. And it's well, I mean, I guess I would say, in the the little I know, Charlie, you know, much less well than you do, obviously. But uh, I, I think the gift is, first of all, he understands so clearly how he is giving, what he is giving to, to the world of Alzheimer's. He has helped advancing the ball of research and of understanding of the disease. And uh, I know how good he feels about that because I can see it on his face whenever we're at, at an event like this. And uh, I think it's, it's amazing that um, I think even as he's able to say less and less, he's able to show up still and people are, um, are still able to get something from him, if that, if that makes any sense. Well, yeah, he's, he's given a lot to this world and uh, from his book, Wealth and Families, and what that's contributed um, and to what he's doing now. And, and uh, we're enjoying it together. So. Well, it's terrific to see you again, Charlie. I know we've got a film that's going to be playing later and there's going to be all these, I know it's going to go straight to your head, all these, <laughs> all these uh, people saying all these things about accolades. you. and Yeah, all these accolades. I, and... Um, I hope you'll still talk to the likes of me after, <laughs> after you're, uh, you're, you're honored so, so much in a few minutes. Thanks for coming. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for coming, both of you. Hi, I'm David Schenk. I'm Gail Matthews. Gail, so nice to meet you. Nice thanks to thanks you. for coming today. Tell us about what your connection is with Cure Alzheimer's Fund. Well. My husband died a year ago of Alzheimer's. I'm sorry. We were married 54 years, and we lived a quality of life up until uh, the last year. And he made me vow that I would work to find a cure, uh, to make people aware of a disease he thought was stigmatized, and that we were going to live a quality of life until the end. And he made me take notes about our journey to help caregivers and the book came out on the day he died ironically mm. and uh, the funding goes to cure Alzheimer's every book sold and I a friend told me about cure Alzheimer's and I was so impressed with this wonderful charity because it is one of the few charities that gives 100% to research and sponsors the doctors so that's the only way we'll find a cure and um, I'm, I'm just so delighted that I can be a part of this. And Charles Collier is one who also helped get me on to cure Alzheimer's. And that has the number, the best rating you can get from the uh, Charity Navigator. Yeah, yeah so just to, just to explain that to, to our viewers um, and to slow it down a little bit, um, if you give $1 to Cure Alzheimer's Fund, that's one dollar, one hundred cents that will go into scientific research. Absolutely none of it goes to administrative funds and the way we're able to do that is that our founders and our board pays for all the administrative expenses so they allow every single cent of the donations coming from outside to go into scientific research. And do you know how rare that is? I do know that it's very, very rare. And it makes me very upset when I go into a charity I want to sponsor and find that the overhead is tremendous and that is not necessary. So 
I'm, I'm just delighted to be part of Cure Alzheimer's. And I think Sally Rosenfield does a spectacular job for the founders. Great plug for Sally, one of, one of our, our few staffers. It's a very lean uh, and, and, and mean machine. Um, I'm very sorry for the circumstances that brought you to us, but I'm so glad that you found us and that you're involved and, you're, and that you're here today. Thank you for thank saying hi. Thank you very hi. much. And thank you. And nice thank meeting you. you. Yeah, thanks. And now my old friend A.J. Jacobs, who is uh, an author who is almost as esteemed as I am, I would say. <laughs> I'd say 40 percent. 40 percent. I'll right, take so, it. Somewhere in that. Wait, when you put the two of us together, we're almost a good writer. <laughs> we got to collaborate next time. Um, AJ, you uh, looked me up not long ago and said that you were getting involved in a new project, which you'll tell us about shortly, and that you wanted the money that you raised to go to Alzheimer's disease. And um, we, we connect you with Cure Alzheimer's Fund, and that's why you're here. That's tell it. us about your project. Well, my project is a benefit for Alzheimer's, and it's, uh, the idea is that we are all connected. We're all one big family. So I'm building the biggest family tree in history, and then I'm holding the biggest family reunion ever. And it is, uh, you're invited, everyone's invited, and all of the proceeds will go to help fighting Alzheimer's. And when I first decided to do Alzheimer's as the cause, because my grandfather had Alzheimer's and it's just, you know, an underfunded uh, health tragedy. So I said, I knew you had written that wonderful book. So I came to you and I said, I want to do something with Alzheimer's. And you said, cure Alzheimer's fun. And it was, that was the best decision I made all year. It was, I mean, it was so easy. I didn't have to do due diligence because you had done all the due diligence. Uh, but then you did come up to last year's uh, symposium and you got to hear Rudy speak and obviously you were very impressed by that. Oh yeah, I mean, it is amazing. And I love the model that they're, they're using, the, the venture model, the, you know, taking some risks, really being active, looking into it and, and funding what they think looks promising. So I'm, I'm just super excited to be involved in a small way. And Tim Armour has been extraordinary. He has treated me like a cousin, which he is, because, you know, we're all cousins. So uh, that has been uh, just a joy. And I can't wait to raise as much money as possible for you guys. So now there are uh, all these people out there wondering how they can get involved in your project and see if they're related to you and show up at your at your family reunion. How? What's the first step for people if they want to find out if they can be a part of this? Well, you can go to the Global Family Reunion website, globalfamilyreunion.com, and, uh, and then you can just fill out a little form that asks for your grandparents' names and birth dates. And I have hundreds of researchers, amazing volunteers, who are looking on these genealogy websites to figure out how we're all related. So if you just do that, you can be related to me, which I know is not that interesting to people, but you can also be figure out how you're related to Barack Obama and uh, Albert Einstein and David Schenck and everyone else in the world. So it is an extraordinary time. Can you get the order of importance backwards, <laughs> but go ahead, go ahead. Uh, so it's just a wild, extraordinary time in the the, the family history area, right. and uh, and I think it's not just cool that we can connect all of these and that we're going to have a family tree of the entire world, which we will in about ten years, but it's also scientifically important because there are scientists using this family tree to study how diseases are passed down. So there's some great uh, people at MIT working on this now. And right now, the big global family tree has 79 million people on it. So it's an amazing wow. data set. Wow. And I think it'll help with Alzheimer's, which is, I believe, partially hereditary. Um, well, certainly it has a genetic, a very strong genetic component. Um, so, um, when will this family reunion happen? Do, do we know yet? Is there a date or a, oh, there's a, a time period? There's all sorts of, there's, uh, it's June 6, 2015. There's going to be uh, music and comedy and uh, I just got RSVPs from our ancestral cousins uh, because I'm related to George Washington and Abraham Lincoln, as are you. Well, like. 42 steps away, but still. So we, Close enough for me. That's right. So we have these, uh, there'll be a history corner where there'll be living reenactors. Nice. Um, but yeah, it's uh, and we've got amazing speakers about science 
and genealogy. Uh, and someone from the Cure Alzheimer's Fund will be speaking. Uh, I think we're still figuring out who it will be. Fantastic. Well, thank you for being a part of this, for joining us last year, and then again this year, for making us the recipient of your uh, of, of the, all this um, money that you're going to raise in this tremendous project. And my pleasure. Uh, it's it's an honor to have you. I know. I feel like I came in. Uh, you know, I, I knew that this was the place to be, and then just the, three days ago, you emailed me the New York Times article, and Amazing, it was it? extraordinary. Number one emailed article for two days straight. Oh, really? I didn't even see that, yeah. but that's not, I'm not surprised. It was replaced only by an article about helicopter parenting, which is hard to beat, because yes. all those helicopter parents, they like to forward that around. But it's just a, it's such an exciting time right now in, in this area. So thanks and, for introducing me. Uh, my pleasure, and I'm so glad you're here again. My pleasure. All right, we'll talk to you again I later. I'm out. Okay, right. yes, thanks, AJ. <clears throat> Hi, I'm David Shank. This is Max Wallach. Hi. Max, you said, say your name again. Max Wallach. Great to see you, and tell us about your connection to Cure Alzheimer's Fund. Um, so I was on the planning committee um, for this event this year, and um, I've sort of been involved in, in doing a lot of other help uh, planning and things for this organization in the past. Um, thank you for that. Thank you. And um, I'm very focused on sort of helping bring an end to Alzheimer's and yeah. uh, through research and through patient support and caregiver support and, and through non-pharmacological treatments for, for Alzheimer's patients. How did you first get drawn to either Alzheimer's or Cure Alzheimer's Fund in, in particular? Um, so my great grandmother was diagnosed with Alzheimer's when I was six, and I became one of her primary caregivers. And through um, my interactions with her and, and through sort of what I saw her go through and what my family went through, I really realized that what I need to do in my life is, is help these patients and help their families. And so I, um, a, f a few years after she passed away, I, cr I founded a nonprofit organization called Puzzles to Remember, and it collects and distributes jigsaw puzzles to facilities that care for Alzheimer's and dementia patients. And so we've, um, this organization has just collected and distributed over 35,000 jigsaw puzzles. And wow. And sent them to 2,500 facilities across the world. Um, and, we've, and we've also collaborated with a puzzle manufacturer, Springbok Puzzles. Um, it's based in Missouri, and they've actually made a special line of puzzles for Alzheimer's and dementia patients, um, which have sort of... Um, Smaller piece, uh, smaller piece number, and larger piece size, so they're they're more accessible for people with advanced Alzheimer's, but also um, have themes that are, are very calming and, and memory provoking, and can be used to talk to, to really in, enhance a sort of the quality of life of Alzheimer's patients. That's what the whole project was for, um, and then also for the past three and a half or four years, I've been involved in doing Alzheimer's research, and it's been very. Um, exciting in, in what we've been doing because we've published several papers stating that there's a hormone that's already found in people that can be potentially used as both a um, as a test and as a treatment for Alzheimer's. And we've been and we started we started looking at this sort of um, hormone in in people originally. We saw we have this we had this large sample of people who either were had a, were healthy con, um, controls or had had Alzheimer's or MCI. Um, and we saw that there were changes in the levels of this hormone and the, its correlation with um, serum amyloid beta. And so we sort of thought, what could we do with this? And we took it into mice. We, we started going into transgenic mice. And we've looked at the ability to, or the injection of one dose of this hormone will actually have this large um, increase of, of amyloid beta in the serum. So we are able to sort of after like one, like a, even like in a doctor's office, you could have like a, a sh like a shot, and then you could sort of a few hours later, you could see if somebody has elevated um, amyloid beta in their brain. So it could be very useful in in, in diagnosis and in sort of having um, cheaper and and more um, effective diagnosis. Sorry. So what sort of scan would you need to see that in the brain? You just give this as an injection, and then you you take their blood. You don't, you don't need any brain scans. It's very quick and very easy wow. test. It's kind of like a glucose challenging test in diabetes. So it's very, it's very um, exciting work that we've worked on. And also we moved, if we can get amyloid beta out of the brain after one injection, we thought maybe we could do this over two months, inject these mice with this drug for, for every day for two months. And we saw this sort of um, reversal back to control behavior. So they, they act completely normal on mazes. 
and they have a very uh, large reduction in the amount of plaques they have in, in their brains. So how, so how soon could that test get to, uh, to market? So we, there's already actually an FDA approved drug um, that's an analog of this hormone, it's called, it's called Pramlintide. And so that if we can work, if we've already started a few clinical trials and we want to continue doing more larger clinical trials and if these could, if these work, it would be very quick because it's already available on, and on market. So it's, really, it's very exciting. Wow, well congratulations on that and thank you for saying hi and telling us about your, your connection here. Thank All right, thanks. Hi, I'm David Shank. Hi, David. Tell us who you are. Sherry Crotty. Hi, Sherry. Welcome. And you Anna are? Anna Thompson. Hi. Welcome, and tell us about your connection to Cure Alzheimer's Fund. I lost my mother to Alzheimer's about five years ago. I'm sorry. Thank you. And how did you, uh, from there, you decided to, to get involved in some way. How did you find Cure Alzheimer's Fund in particular? Uh, my father brought my mother to Mass General about 15 years ago, and so I got invited to several functions with Cure Alzheimer's Fund. So. And, and you're I, obviously impressed because you're here. Absolutely, yes. So, and I donated to the memory wall, was my first connection. And then I met Henry, Phyllis, Jackie, and Jeff. So that's Our wonderful I'm founders. Yes. And tell us about your connection. Well, I was run into this by Sherry. I also lost my mother. Step in a little bit closer, okay. so make sure you're on camera. I also lost my mother a little over six years ago to Alzheimer's and uh, got my hands on everything I could read. Um, you know, we were always trying to educate ourselves and fix things, and then came to the symposium last year and the, and the dinner and heard him speak, and I was just so amazed and blown away. And so since Rudy then, is the guy you want to hear yeah, to explaining yeah, Alzheimer's yeah. disease. There's really no one, no one like. It goes way over my head, but it, it's amazing how he's able to delve into it and, and share that with you and make you feel like you could do something. And it's kind of an incredible week to be, to be having uh, this symposium because of this extraordinary research that was that just came out and was on the front page of the Times the other day. I'm, yeah. So, yeah, it's, it's exciting to be a part of this. Well, thank you for, uh, obviously, as I've said to many people here, I'm sorry for the circumstances that brought you into this world, but I'm so glad that you found Cure Alzheimer's Fund, and thank you for being a part of, uh, of the solution, this very ambitious um, solution and we're all gonna we're all gonna get exciting there. Exciting times. Yeah. Exciting. I think that's the most important part of the message is to find the cure, not to just sustain. Yeah. Yes, I quite agree. Thanks for saying hi. Thank Great you. to meet you. you. Yeah. So that's gonna be it for our red carpet interviews. Uh, this has been fun. A little sweaty for me, but uh, but it's been fun to say hi to the founders and some of the some of the key people involved in Cure Alzheimer's Fund and then some of the people who are who are here to help us out in slightly more peripheral ways. Uh, I'll talk for another minute or two and then we'll uh, kind of transition over to the, to the big hall um, and tell you that what we're gonna be seeing for the next couple hours is first some tributes to a few special people and some welcome remarks. And then we're gonna be listening to Rudy Tanzi, which is why we're all here in the first place. And Rudy is gonna do the second thing that he does best. The first thing is he does extraordinary research and leads uh, an incredible consortium of research. The other thing that he does in a really spectacular way is to explain Alzheimer's, explain the research, explain the, the cutting edge, uh, where we are uh, exactly, you know, uh, in terms of what we've learned this week and last week and the month before that about what Alzheimer's is, how, what the best strategies are to fight it. And Rudy does that uh, really like no other person I've ever met. He does it in a way that's that's uh that's available to a lay audience so um i think i've talked enough i've been david shank author of the forgetting and senior advisor to cure alzheimer's fund this amazing organization that i'm proud to be a part of and uh thank you for watching and please stay tuned for the more important part which is the uh our our, uh, our annual consortium uh where rudy tanzi will be explaining where we are at the state of uh alzheimer's science thank you Stay with us.